controllers. So when you talk about the controllers, this is basically the brain of the robot and it is usually supposed to provide the intelligence that is necessary in order to control the manipulators. It looks at the sensory information and computes the control command that must be sent to the actuators in order to carry out specific tasks. The controller usually has four things that we can mention. The first one is the memory. So the controller generally include, it include memory. It usually include the memory. And one of the, the memory here is that it stores the program. The use of the memory is to store the program and state the robot system as obtained from the sensors. The other one, we can talk of the computational unit. Computational unit. We can talk of the computational unit. So in this case, it is supposed to compute the control command. The main work is to compute the control command. Then we must also have the appropriate hardware to interface with the external world. Appropriate hardware. to interface with the external world, with the external world. So we have to ensure that uh, uh, there is the appropriate interface. And in that case, that one is always done by use of the sensors and the actuators. And then we have the hardware of the user interface. So the fourth one, hardware of the user interface, hardware of the user interface. So when you talk about the hardware of the user interface, this one is supposed to allow the use of the human operator in order to monitor or control the operation of the robot. It's supposed to allow uh, the use of human operator to monitor or control uh, the operation of the robot. And it must carry out two specific duties, uh, or it must have, it must be in a position to display uh, what uh, to display the status of the system and again it must have an input device that allows the human to enter the command to the robot so in that case that one can be the software in order to have the this 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 just supposed to ensure that there is a communication between the human operator and the robot system itself so that is uh, to it allow the human operator to monitor and control the operation and also allow the human operator in order to enter commands to the robot. And again, it must be in a position to display and show the status of the system. The user interface that we are talking about here can be a personal computer uh, with appropriate uh, software uh, or teach pendant controllers uh, usually perform the necessary arithmetic computation for determining uh, the correct manipulation path speed and positions. Ro robots, uh, when, when you talk of the robots, uh, especially when you talk of the robot controllers, the robot controllers uh, uh, mostly use microcontrollers as their controllers. They are intelligent devices used inside the robots. However, in some cases, when you talk of the highly cognitive robots, they usually use a complete CPU. So that is uh, what is always used as the, uh, as the controller. So you may have the robots making use of the microcontrollers as their controllers, uh, just, uh, uh, for a, uh, just for the controllers. And then you can also have, uh, when you talk about a highly cognit cognitive robots, that is the robots that are used in an environment that is not known to the human being and also to the environment, that is to the designer as well as to the, to the robot itself, then the robots can use uh, what we refer to as the CPU as their controllers. That is a complete computer. So let's look at, uh, uh, with, with, with the last, with, with, with what we talked about as cognitive robots, I think it is better we look at the levels of autonomy of the robots. So we can talk about the levels of autonomy so that we look at the four levels of autonomy of the robots. So we can talk about the levels of autonomy. The levels of autonomy. So levels of autonomy. Or 
you can write it. You can say levels of robots autonomy. Levels of autonomy of robots. So when you talk about the levels of autonomy, just like any other control system, robots usually have very levels of autonomy. And in this case, we are going to talk about the, to the, the, the four levels of autonomy. The first one is direct interaction. Direct interaction. Direct interaction. So when you talk about the direct interaction, uh, it, it, uh, this one usually, uh, in this case, uh, the, the human being nearly has complete control over the robot. So each and every action that the robot is supposed to carry out is controlled by human beings. So that is what we call direct interaction. The robot is not in a position to carry out any activity without the help of human being. So that is what we refer to as the direct interaction. The second level of autonomy that uh, we can also talk about is what we refer to as the operator assist mode. Operator assist mode. The operator assist mode. So when you talk about the operator assist mode, then in this case, uh, we usually leave the medium to high level tasks uh, for the operator while low level tasks uh, can be done by the human being. So in this type of, uh, in this level of autonomy, the operator command high to medium tasks with the robot automatically figuring out how to achieve them. But when it comes to low, medium level tasks, then the robot is able to carry them out alone. The next mode of, the next level of autonomy that we can talk about is what we call uh, autonomous robots. Autonomous robots. Autonomous robots. So these are simply robots that can go for extended period of times, extended period of time without human interaction. Uh, when you talk of the higher levels of autonomy, they do not necessarily require uh, more complex. When you talk about this, so with the autonomous, we are simply talking about uh, the robots that can work for a period of time without human interaction. And you will find that higher levels of autonomy do not necessarily require more complex cognitive ability, abilities. Uh, for example, you can uh, have the robots that can be used in assembly plants uh, being completely autonomous, but operate in a fixed pattern. So after a program or a fixed pattern, a program has been written, uh, then it will operate within a fixed pattern. Then the last level that we are going to talk about is what we call highly cogn cognitive. Highly cognitive robots. So when you talk about the highly cognitive robots, we are simply talking about a robot that is used in an environment that is not known or is not well understood by the designer, by both the designer and the robot itself. For example, you can talk of uh, the space exploration or explorative environment or an, an, an unpredictable environment. You send it to a place where you you even the designer yourself, you're not aware, like space exploration, you can talk about, majorly we can talk about explorative environment or unpredicted environment. And maybe to conclude on the levels of autonomy, then the level of autonomy and also the, comp uh, the, complexity, the complexity of uh, the cognitive abilities may advise the sophistication of the controller used. So you can always use a controller that you are going to use will always be dependent on the level of autonomy uh, that uh, you want that particular robot to carry out. So that is as far as uh, the components of, that is all that we can talk about as far as the components of uh, the robots are concerned.